right, I uh, hope you had a good weekend, and uh, for those that got to watch graduation, um, it was exciting, it was good to see some of the students again I haven't seen in a while, uh, if you were able to watch it on Facebook Live, um, you know, you can see it there on our page, and that's what you're working towards, so hopefully we can get you there. Uh, we are going to move into some bigger problems. Okay, and I, I don't want that to sound scary, but um, so far we've been doing one-step equations. That's what you just took your test over. I want to first talk about something that we need to cover before we get into these bigger problems because this is going to be a part of those problems. If we can break it down and make them simpler and smaller, then that way, no matter how big they get, we can still do them. Um, the thing I want to cover here is like terms because when we're doing bigger problems, the first thing we have to kind of do is combine the like terms, the ones that are alike. Now, right now, I mean, those, those words we've probably seen before, but as far as in math, we may not have covered uh, this as far as you may have not, you know, ever seen this before. But basically, when we're talking about like terms, we're talking about uh, ones that we can put together, ones that we can combine. And in order for that to be possible, they need to have the same variable. And just a reminder, a variable is a letter. So they have to be the same letter. And they have to have the same exponent. And remember, exponent is that little number that's up above, you know, a number or, or a letter. So they have to have the same letter and they have to have the same exponent. That's the only qualifying uh, things that they have to be for you to be able to combine them. And when we're talking about combining two in, in the problems that we're going to be doing, we're talking about addition and subtraction. You can multiply a letter and a number. And you can, um, <clears throat> you can even put it as a division problem by making it a fraction. What we're talking about is can we add or subtract them. So just to kind of skip forward and then come back, basically I can multiply a number and a letter. Like if I do 7 times y, I can put those together and call them 7y. Uh, you know, think about yo-yos. If I had a yo-yo, a, a y, and I had 7 of them, I could write it as 7 yo-yos. Okay? So I would just, you know, if, if y is representing a yo-yo, then I have 7 of them. So you can write that. You can combine those because you're multiplying. The problem comes if I can combine uh, like seven yo-yos and two yo-yos, you know, not multiplying them, not doubling them, saying, hey, you know, I'm going in and doubling seven yo-yos. Okay, that's multiplying. This is saying, hey, you bought seven yo-yos, you bought two, put them together and what do you have, okay? Now, you're going to see that when you have that, someone has seven, someone has two, and you walk in and you're like, hey, those are yo-yos, those are yo-yos. <laughs> it's funny saying yo-yos that many times. But when I can combine them, you can combine those because they're the same thing, okay? You could say, well, if you have seven yo-yos and you have two, then I can combine these coefficients and say, well, now I have nine of them. I have nine yo-yos. What you can't do is say, well, I've got seven yo-yos and this person has two xylophones, okay? And you can't make Sorry, up... I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please... Ah. I guess my Siri uh, responds to yo-yos. Um, but basically, you can't say you have some kind of uh, you know, yo-yo xylophone thing. Uh, another thing that people use a lot in math is A and B. So it's, it's like apples and bananas. So if I have two apples and someone else has three apples and you walk up to pay for them and you just put them in the same basket, you put them together, you're going to be paying for five apples. You can combine those because you've got all apples. 2A and 3A gives you 5A. What you can't do is say, well, I've got uh, three apples and someone has four bananas. And you can't walk in and say you have some kind of uh, an apple or a uh, uh, banana or a bapple. You can't, you can't make up a new thing and combine that A and B. Okay, because they're two different things. Now, multiplying, once again, multiplying, you can combine. So, you know, just to show you, I can have um, 
this and I can, and I know it kind of goes against what I just said, but just as long as you can keep separate them when you're adding and subtracting, you have to follow these like term rules, but when you're multiplying and dividing, you don't. So, you know, this, you can just multiply the coefficients and then just write your AB because you're not, you're still multiplying A times B and you're still multiplying A times B here and you're still multiplying three times four, you're still multiplying 12. So in multiplication, you can condense it by writing because of that rule that we've talked about when you write things, you know, right next to each other, that means to multiply, okay? But you can't do this and put them together because once you put them together, that means you're multiplying. And we're not multiplying here, we're adding. So, and, or even if you're doing a subtraction, adding and subtracting, you can't combine the A and B because that's not always mean multiplication. And as far as division, you can always kind of write it as a fraction and you've, you've simplified it. Okay, so that's where, like, it, just to give you an example, if I have a problem that's A divided by B, well, then I can write it like this, make it a fraction, and that represents the A divided by B. You're not combining them. You're, you know, they're not like terms, but you can put them in a fraction. So multiplication division is, is not in this as far as working with the rules of what they have to be. Okay, so I just want to keep repeating that because all the problems that you're going to see with this, we're either adding or subtracting to be able to combine it. Okay, and that, and that too it comes up when we have to distribute and distribute, we know we're multiplying and we can use those rules that are separate. All right, so let's go back to this. Same variable, same exponent. So we just talked about how they have to be the same letter to be able to combine them, like A and A or B and B or C and C. They have to have the same letter. So you could have a really long problem. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use A, B, and C, okay? And then I'm also gonna use just a number with no letter and talk about how that's a different thing. So let's say I've got 7A plus 4B uh, minus 3C uh, plus 2A uh, minus 2B plus 5C, hopefully you guys can see this whole board, plus 8, okay? So really long problem, it looks hard, this is what I was talking about, the problems get bigger, but really, once we understand this concept and break it down and use this to our advantage, the problems aren't that long and the math is not that hard, okay? We're not doing big numbers. We're, you know, just making sure we're following this rule and we can make this problem smaller. And in fact, for a while, we're just going to see the word simplify, which means we're not solving. And the reason why we're not solving is we don't know what A, B, and C represents yet. Remember we talked about substitute. We don't know what they are yet. We don't know if A is 2 or 10 or negative 4. We also, the other reason why we can't solve yet is we have no equal sign. Now, as soon as we put an equal sign and put a number over here or put something over here, then we can solve. We can go through and try to solve or at least get it down set up to solve. When it means simplify, all they're saying is we don't want this long thing anymore. For one, it takes up a lot of paper and board, but we also, we don't always want to be looking at this and when we go to substitute, you know, if I say, okay, B is four, you got to go through and find all your Bs and put them in there. When you're simplifying, you're, you're putting them all together, making it smaller. That way, when you go to solve or simplify, it's, or solve and, and, you know, plug in or substitute, they're a smaller problem. They've been simplified. So what we have to do here is go through and see what can we combine. Can I just start going, well, 7 plus 4 minus 3 plus 2? No, because A is not the same term. It's not a like term as B. Okay, and it's also not a like term as C, and I can't just combine these two together. So you gotta go through and say, well, what are the like terms? They have to have the same variable and the same exponent. We'll get to the exponents in a second, but right now I'm just using letters and numbers and saying which one of these can I can combine. Okay, so we, what I do, now there's all different ways to do this. I find it simpler to start 
left or right because you know I'm the kind of person I'll go into shop at a grocery store or something and I'm like I need bananas I don't know why I keep talking about bananas but you know I, I, I go in and say okay I need bananas that's why I'm going in the store and I'll buy it and then I'll see some other stuff and I'll start buying and I leave and I'm heading home and I'm like you know I didn't buy bananas I bought everything else but forgot what I actually went into the store for so keeping that in mind math the same way if I start just picking and choosing and going even alphabetical or something, I'll uh, lose where I am and I'll be like, did I already add that? It's kind of like that thing, do you check the door that you locked like five times? You're like, okay, did I lock that? You know, so what I do is I start over here, you know, to whatever letter this is. Now I happen to write some of these in alphabetical, but I start over here and I say, okay, I'm gonna look through the rest of the problem and see if, is there any other A's. Now, what becomes very important are these signs right here. Because, you remember, we have to go to integer brain and say, well, I can't combine these, so I'm not adding 4B, because I have an A and a B, but I can look and say this is a positive 4B, okay, this is a negative 3C, positive 2A. See, I predict each sign with what it is. Now, this first one, because it's positive, there's no sign out here but it is positive, remember? So I look through and I say, okay, I have a positive 7A, and I'm going through and I'm trying to find another A. Well, there's one, and it's positive. So if I have seven apples, and I'm using, you know, the A can mean anything. Seven apples and two apples, and they're positive, then I have nine apples, okay? And then what I do, because like I said, I forget, and I kind of forget what I've done, I cross this out and I cross this out because I use both of them. That way I don't, you know, on a really long problem, I don't forget if I've used that. You know, I don't forget if I've, you know, combined them already. And two, if there's another A somewhere down here, I know I need to still add it in or subtract it. But there's not, there's no other A. So I'm like, okay, there's my A, okay? It's positive, seven and two is positive. Then I go to B. Okay, and I've got a positive 4B, I look through, I've got a negative 2B. So 4B minus 2B is a positive, and I need to put the positive sign because it's inside here, okay? And I've combined this and this, so I cross them out. Okay, so 4B minus 2B is positive 2B, okay? You sound like uh, Shakespeare, to be or not to be. That is the question. So, now I've combined those, there's no other B's, and so now I go to my C's. And, and I'm just going left to right until I run out. So now I'm starting with a negative 3C, and I look through, and I have a positive 5C, so negative 3 plus 5 is also positive 2, okay? Don't forget to write your letter each time, if there's a letter there. I see students do that from time to time, they'll combine the 3 and 5, and forget to put the C, and that's gonna be wrong because you, you know, this is not two, the number's down here by itself. This is C's, we're dealing with C's, so make sure you write your C. I use these two, and all I'm left with is this eight. This eight does not go with any of these because it does not have a variable, okay? So you can't combine it with anything that has a variable. In fact, they've used this term before, this is a constant, okay? It's, the opposite of variable, opposite of change, it's constant. You can't change an eight, an eight is an eight, okay? It's not, it's not like a letter that you can plug in anything, it's an eight. So I can put it here at the end, it's a positive eight, I've used it. Now, this is what's the hardest thing for a student when they're learning this, because I see this mistake, you know, throughout, you know, teaching each term. We're done, okay? Now this does not look like we're done. I see students, they always want to get down to like one thing, you know, like eight or, you know, 17C or something. We, we can't combine this. This is an A, this is a B, this is a C, and this is a constant. There's nothing left to combine. And there's no equal sign, so we can't solve for it yet. And there's no, we don't know what A, B, and C. Now if later someone comes along and says A is four, B is negative two, C is five, then we can plug it in and solve, okay? 
or if someone puts an equal sign and says what it's equal to, then we can solve. And that's what we're going to get to, the, the longer equations that are going to have an equal sign and we have to solve. But as far as simplifying, we've taken this really long thing and we've simplified it as best as we could. Okay, and so if you can't combine any of these, if they don't have the same variable or exponent, then this is our answer. Okay, and that's the, that seems to be the hardest thing for a student is to say, well, I'm done there. Now, you want to make sure that there's nothing else you can combine, and, but once you see that you can't, then that's where you're done. Okay, so let me put another one up there and we'll, we'll do it. I'll, I'll give you, you could probably pause it if you want to and try it real quick, and then I'll solve it here. Okay, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use some different letters this time. Let's do uh, 10x, well, let's do negative 10x, uh, plus, um, 7b, uh, minus 8m, plus 2x, plus 7m, minus 3b, plus 6, minus 2. Okay? So if you need to pause it, I'm so used to it when I teach in the classroom, I stop for a while, but you can obviously pause it so I can start right away. But, uh, so let's solve this. So uh, let's go through and find our like terms and combine them. Okay, so I'm going to start here with, you know, far left. Now it's negative this time. So I got negative 10x, I'm looking for another x, there it is, negative 10x plus 2x, so negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8x, and I've used these two terms, okay? Then I got 7b minus 3b, so 7 minus 4, or 7 minus 3 is 4, okay? And then I, I did a tricky one, so just to, because I keep wanting to repeat some of these lessons we've done in the past, negative 8m plus 7m is negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. But remember, we don't write negative 1, we just write negative m. Now, you, if you put this, negative 1m, you're not wrong, and I'm not going to count you wrong right now, but you're, you know, we don't use 1 when we're variables, it's, just, you know, it's, it's not needed. So it's negative 1m, and because there's only one, we just write the m, okay? And then I've used these two. And then all I have left is this 6 minus 2. Now, these are both constants. They're both numbers. I can just do 6 minus 2, and I can get 4, okay? 6 minus 2 is 4. Used all that. See, I see I've used them all. And I check in real quick and make sure I can't add x or v or m. Or the number, so that's that's why I'm done. Doesn't matter what order they're in, uh, as long as you've got the right signs to them, okay? And and I I don't I mean I, it seems like you pile on pile on pile on, but uh, you could rewrite these in any order as long as you get the signs the same, okay? So just to show you, because I know some of you may have done them in a different order. Um, maybe not gone left to right, this just shows that you don't have to go left to right, but I just want to give you, and there's several examples I could give you that's the same, but just, just to give those that are kind of like, well, I've got the same things, but I put them out of order. Am I wrong? Well, no. So I could rewrite this, let's say 4V, it's positive, it's positive. I don't need the positive if, if it's at the beginning. Uh, minus M, as long as you keep it a minus, plus 4 minus 8x. As long as you keep it a negative 8x, you could rewrite this in a separate order and it's the same answer. I know it don't look the same, but it's the same, okay? Because you've got the same signs, that's a positive, that's a negative, that's a positive 4, that's a negative 8x. Okay, so if you had something like that, as long as your signs are the same as these, it doesn't matter what order they're in, okay? Because either way, we can't combine them, and that's what we're done. Okay, so, and, and there's, other, there's other orders that you could have as long as the signs are the same. Okay, so I wanted to, just in case you're doing them in a different order, I wanted to show that you're not wrong. You know, it's going to be, it's going to look slightly different, but as long as they're the right signs, then you're okay. Okay, 
All right, now let's talk about the same exponent. So here's an example of that. Let's say I have 2x plus 3x squared, okay? So in order for something to be a like term, it has to have the same letter and the same exponent. When we look here, these are the same letters, but they're not the same exponent, which means I can't combine them. If I'm adding and subtracting, I can't combine them. I can't just make this 5x cubed, you know, I can't just do something like this. I, I can't do that. These, this, this is a, once you throw in an exponent on a variable, this is a different thing than this is. That's, it's not a like term. You can't just combine them. I can't just make, I can't just choose and say, well, I'll go with the x squared. Okay, I can't do that because one of them's an x, one of them's an x squared. Okay, now. Just to remind you, if I'm multiplying them, then I can. So let's say I had something like this. Okay, and we've done these. We did these when we were talking about exponent rules. So this I can't do. I can't combine them, you know, with an addition or subtraction. But I can multiply them because multiplication is all together anyway. I, and we did some of this when we did distribution and we did our exponent rules. I can do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then x times x squared. Remember, this is a x to the 1, and I just add the exponents, and I get 6x cubed. Okay, I can do that with multiplication. And if I'm dividing, so if I'm dividing 2x by 3x squared, I can, I can write that as a fraction and, and put it like that because it's multiplication divisions is its own thing. But addition and subtraction, I cannot combine those together. So that, if it's said to simplify, that's as simple as we can get for now. Until we know what x is, that's where you have to leave it, okay? But if they do have the same exponent, so all I'm gonna do here is put that and say, okay, well now I have two of these x squares. It'd be like something you're holding on to. I have two of them and then someone else has three of them, well then I can combine them together. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with the exponents because I'm not multiplying them. I'm saying, hey, you've got two of these in your hand, you've got three of these in your hand, and I'm gonna put them together and now I have five of those in my hand, okay? So that's what we can do. Same thing with subtraction. So four y squared minus y squared, okay, and, and remember, this is a one, okay? If there's no number there, that's one of them. So if I had four of them, but someone took one away, well, that means I'd only have three of them, okay? So, and I know it's a lot of stuff, but you can go back and kind of go through, make sure you're following these rules. I wanted to spend a day on this so that when we get to the bigger problems, um, you know, I didn't want it to be like, well, here's this and this at the same time. I wanted to spend a day to just show these rules. That way, when we get to the bigger problem, we get a little practice with it today, then that part of it's not going to trip us up. We can, we can do that part and move and solve, okay? So, here's a couple examples now of these, okay? So, let's do, um, so now we're going to put both of, the, both of the things together. Let's say I'm doing... Uh, 7x plus 3y squared minus 2x plus 4y uh, minus x plus 7y squared um, minus 3 plus 2x squared, okay? Long, looks big, looks scary, but I promise you if we just use these two simple rules and go through the math isn't hard, meaning there's not big numbers, we just have to kind of remember our rules and go through and make this simple, make it simpler, okay? So, I'm gonna start over here for me, and say, okay, 7x, I'm gonna look for any other x's. Just x, not x squared, okay, not a y, but just x. So 7x 
minus 2x. So that's 7 minus 2 is 5x. But I also look and say, okay, and, and let's go ahead. Well, I don't want to have to rewrite everything. So right now I'm at 5x. Okay, 7 minus 2 is 5. I have 5x. But then I'm taking 1x away. Here's a 1x. So 5x minus 1x is 4x. So there was actually three. I did that on purpose. There's three just plain x's. Okay, and so I combined them all. 7 minus 2 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, and that's all, that's all the x's. They're just x. Okay, now I'm going to look at 3y squared. Is there any other y squared? Yes, right here. 3 of them plus 7 of them is 10 of them. I don't do anything with the exponent. I'm just combining the 7 and the 3. Okay? And that's all the y squared. And I can't, just to remind you, I can't add the y squared and the x squared because they're not the same variable. they got to have the same variable and the same exponent. <clears throat> now, 4y, there's no other y, so it stays the same. Okay? Uh, there's no other number, so it stays the same. And there's no other x squared, so it stays the same. Now, I'm going to do one last check and say, is there anything that has the same letter and exponent? There's no other x, just plain x. There's no other y squared. There's no other y. There's no other number. And there's no other x squared. Okay? Can't combine these two things because they're not the same exponent. Can't combine these two things because they're not the same exponent. So this is our answer. Okay? So, and, and in fact, you know, when I was in school, we used to have to put these in a certain order. They, they spent a lot of time on, like, ascending and descending, meaning you start with your squares and then go down. But you don't, you don't need to. As long as you got the signs right, you can leave it like that. Okay? So that's my answer. And then that's the hardest part. A lot of students don't want to leave it like that. But if you can't combine anything else, that's where you stop. Okay? So let me put one more up there. Pause it, try it, and I've got your assignment. Let me do your assignment. So uh, let's do negative 3y squared plus 2y squared uh, plus 7x plus 3x squared minus 2 plus 4x uh, plus 8. Minus 3 minus 2x. Okay? All right, if you need to pause it, I really hope the video has got the whole board. Otherwise, you guys are going to be like, what? You know. Um, okay, so let's go through. I'm going to start right here. Negative 3y squared plus 2y squared. Okay, so it's a negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. We don't write the 1. And there was no other y squares. Okay. 7x plus 4x minus 2x. That's all the just x's. Not x squared, it's just x's. So 7x plus 4x is 11x. 11x minus 2x is 9x. And it's positive. You know, and what I'm talking about, the math's not hard, is... You're just doing 7 plus 4 minus 2, which is 11 minus 2, which is 9. There's 9 of those x's, okay? We used all three of these, so we can cross them out, okay? Then there's no other x squared, so it stays what it is. Then I've got negative 2 plus 8 minus 3. I have to combine all just the numbers. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. 6 minus 3 is positive 3. Okay? And I used all three of these, and so I've used everything. Then I just do a quick glance and make sure there's none of these I can combine. There's not. Okay? They don't have the same letter and exponent. So that's where I'm done. All right? Now, let me put some up for an assignment for you for today. And then we'll tomorrow we'll be moving into... 
uh, putting these into equations, okay? A little bit slightly larger equations. So on these, you're just simplifying. And uh, actually, let me do one more um, to show you that distribution could be involved in this, okay? Sorry, I forgot that I was going to put this in there. Because this, this uh, what this does is, is uh, it reviews our distribution, and then to see that you, after you distribute, then you need to check, is there any like terms? So now we're not gonna solve this, we're just simplifying because there's no equal sign and we don't know what D is, okay? So we're just gonna simplify. Now, this is what I was talking about way back when we did distribution, I talked about we can't combine those, they're not like terms. And we didn't really go into why we couldn't combine it, I just told you you couldn't combine it. So now we know why, one's a number, one has D, so they're not like terms. But I can multiply. Remember multiplication, you know, it's all coming together now. Multiplication, you can do. So negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. And negative 4 times 5D is negative 4 times 5 is negative 20D. Don't forget your D, okay? So I multiply that, and then I multiply that. And then off to the side here, you're not distributing this 4 to out here because this is not in the parentheses. All you have left is this 7D at the end. Well now, okay, so we did these kind of things on our test, but we never had this little tag on to where you look and you say, okay, can I combine anything? Well, yes, you can combine this and this. Okay, these, they, they have the same letter, they have the same exponent, so this, you can't combine to anything. There's no other just plain number, constant. But negative 20D plus 7D is negative 13D, okay? Negative 20 plus 7 is negative 13. And don't forget your D. Now these two things, I can't combine because one's a number and one's got a variable. So that's simplified as best as we could. Okay, so that combines our distribution lesson with this to where we're putting it all together now, okay? And believe it or not, the reason why we're putting everything together now is we only have two more weeks. We have this week and next week. So we are near the end, okay? Uh, so end is in sight. That's a good reminder after a lesson like this, right? Okay, so let me put these problems for you to do for your assignment. A lot of these are not as long as the ones we did. I may throw a couple in there. Okay, so this one has a distribution in it. We're in the stage now where I can't always make them up like these. I can in a little bit because you're not solving, but once we get to the ones we have to solve, it's hard to make them up on the spot because they, I, you don't, you try to avoid them coming out as fractions and you guys will appreciate that later. That's a K. just do one long one. So, because I don't think any of these have exponents either, so let's do 10x squared plus 4y minus 3x plus 2x squared minus y plus 4 minus 2y squared plus 8. Okay? So 
simplify those. You're not going to solve, but you can simplify them down. And then we'll check those tomorrow and move into our equations, okay?